What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm uh, running some errands today. I just finished working out, actually, before I left my house, so I look a little like a hot mess, so no judgment there. I know a lot of people that do these videos um, and post them on uh, YouTube and things like that. They always got like the perfect makeup on and they look so done up and so nice and you know that's really not what day-to-day -day real life looks like for everyone i'm not super self-conscious about jumping on these videos and doing them even when i might not look um my best because i think that's what real life is about and that's kind of the point of these videos is to really be very real and honest and um yeah, you know, so it is what it is. But I just got done working out. Uh, heading now to Tractor Supply to grab some grain and other things for the horses. It's nice up here today. It's like oh, almost up to 60 degrees, which feels super warm compared to what it's been like. So I think spring is coming, which is exciting. I worked the horses for the first time in I wrote in like three months I think um, I rode them for the first time in three months um, earlier this week because it was warmer and it was so nice so I'm excited like to get back into the season to start 2022 and see what happens so I wanted to babble a little bit more today about a few things one um, is kind of a circle back to one of the videos I did um, the other week, which was on forming new habits um, and ingraining new normals. And I wanna like circle back to that just real quick because my sister actually messaged me last week, I think, and she's like, oh, I just read this book. I think you would really like it. You should check it out. It's called Atomic Habits. So I've been reading that and I haven't gotten all the way through um, so I can't claim I can speak to it fully yet, but it's so, it's really good so far. And I'm just like, wow, like listening to it is like, yeah, this is what I was trying to articulate, but didn't really know how to articulate it very well when I was babbling about the same thing on like my video the other week. So if you're looking for uh, something to read, consider that, check that out. Um, because I do think the points that he's made in there so far of what I've read so far um, are really good and I feel like it's a lot of what I kind of talk in circles about on on here and very relevant to the things that I feel like I have figured out with specifically like the barrel racing and the horse journey over the past couple years that I've shared with you guys from time to time but I think that book kind of takes all of it and condenses it down into something that's very, very well articulated um, and explains much more thorough what I've been kind of circling around without even knowing it. What I really like about the book so far, not that I've read it all yet, is it really talks about, again, kind of what I feel like I've been trying to say on these videos that I've discovered in my horse racing journey but I probably haven't been able to articulate it quite as well but what I'm gathering a lot from the read is is truly about the process becoming great doing great things being successful getting to the next level accomplishing something is truly about the process which I've said a lot like trust the process focus on the process but when you think about goal setting, which people talk about a lot, um, and goals are good, right? We need direction in our life. But when you focus just on the goal, it sabotages you from being present in the moment as you're working towards the goal and potentially doesn't allow you to be as happy as you could be or would like to be until you reach the goal. Like if my goal is I want to win the 1D 
and I feel like I'm, I'm not accomplishing anything until I get there. That's a lot of time and a lot of life wasted where maybe I haven't been as happy or felt as fulfilled until I've achieved that thing. So that's one of the, the subjects or the topics he kind of circles around is remember that it's about the process, remember that it's about the journey, and remember to live in that while you're working towards your next goals. This is something that I really recognized last, the last two years with my horses is when we started to make progress, when we started to get better, it was because I turned my focus to the process. So instead of going to a barrel race and being like, I have to place in the 3D or I don't feel like I've accomplished anything and I go home upset and I go home disappointed. And you know, that was the measure of success at one point when I started this whole thing. But at some point over the last year, year and a half, I made a decision that I wasn't going to look at it like that like I was going to instead start to look at it as this is about the process this is about taking good care of the animal making sure I'm doing what's best for the animal making sure I'm enjoying my time with the animal making sure I'm enjoying the steps along the way and not being so focused on the end goal that I'm trying to accomplish really focusing on all those steps in the process along the way of the journey. And when I started doing that is really when I started to see some transformation. And so now kind of kind of knowing that about my own barrel racing journey, now reading this book and kind of really tying it all back together, it's like, yeah, like that, that was the secret, one of the secrets to starting to, to advance, to starting to get better. And the other thing is, that was the point when I really started to enjoy the journey a lot more than I had in the past. Like I used to go, to the races and if I didn't do as well as I wanted to then I would I'd be disappointed all week and although I still loved my horses I wasn't like upset with my horses or anything like that but I didn't enjoy them I didn't enjoy all the stuff that comes with owning them and training them I didn't enjoy it to its fullest to the fullest of my ability because in the back of my head I was just disappointed that I wasn't accomplishing my goals quick enough or making progress quick enough. So don't do that in your own life. Like if you're if you're working on tackling a new goal or you're working on a new accomplishment or you're working on trying to get somewhere, remember it's about the journey, it's about the process. Soak that part of it up and focus your energy on making sure you're ingraining the right habits, the new normals day after day after day after day that integrate into the process that you're trying to build with the, with the hope that one day that process does accomplish the goal that you're setting out for or does accomplish the thing that you're wanting. The other thing that he's already talked about a little bit in this book is really understanding that if you have something you're trying to accomplish and you're trying to set new habits to accomplish those things, the only way to really do that to the fullest of your ability or to achieve the greatest success is really to become the identity of that 
of that process or that thing that you're trying to accomplish. So if you, if I ultimately one day want to win money at a rodeo or win the 1D, I need to think of myself as that person. I need to think of my horses as that animal. Every habit that I create, every new normal that I create in my routine needs to come from that lens. The lens of I'm a 1D barrel racer. What would a 1D barrel racer do? Or my horses are 1D barrel horses. What kind of training, what kind of athleticism and conditioning, what kind of maintenance and routines does a 1D barrel horse need or require? And when you start looking at it through that lens, then setting those new habits through that lens, the habits of this is what a 1D barrel racer's day would look like. This is what a 1D barrel horse's day would look like. Then your identity starts to shift. So now it's not fighting uphill to create new habits and new normals against what you think your current identity is. It's just going about your day as this new person. All right, I'm at Tractor Supply. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I got all my gidunks from the tractor. They have this, the curbside pickup now, which is really awesome. So anyway, I recommend that book from what I've read so far. I think it articulates much better what I try to articulate to you guys. Um, and I think that uh, it's a really cool way to look at to look at goal. It's a, it's a different way to look at goal setting and what makes successful people so successful and that sort of thing. And I think if you if you read that book and also that one thing book that I always talk about a lot, um, it's a really good kind of marriage of ideas. And I want to start potentially changing up my routine week to week. Um, I don't talk about work on here a lot because I don't, you know, I try to keep this not about work. I try to keep it focused on other things, but work is super hectic um, for me right now. There's, I have a lot of responsibilities, a lot of things that we're trying to like figure out and sort through. Um, and then on top of that, I have the horses. I'm trying to keep myself in shape. So it can feel a little overwhelming at times. So I think um, what I would, would like to do, maybe for myself going forward, and I'll let you guys know how, how it goes, is really plot out my week a lot more. So for example, on Sunday nights, like really sit down. I already do this somewhat with work because I have to kind of plan my week, week by week, with work based on um, what meeting schedules look like and caseloads and things of that nature. So I think I want to kind of incorporate like a holistic approach to it. So when I sit down on Sunday night to really plot out what my week is, what is gonna look like, I wanna start putting other things in there other than just, besides just work. So if I know I need to give my house cleaning some attention. Maybe I'll schedule two hours for house cleaning on a Wednesday or something like that. Or if I know I really need to do some specific workouts with the horses or I know I have a jackpot that week or something like that, like I'll schedule that in there. And I think I wanna start looking at weekly goals so like we talked about one of these other videos I think yearly goals are really important and I I love the new year for that reason you can really set your your goals for your year really really analyze and evaluate where you are in life where you want to go and kind of plot out your next year so long-term goals are really important 
like long term as in five, 10 year goals, yearly goals are really important. But then I think the thing I want to start trying this year is weekly goals. So if I, I have, if I know I want to accomplish this over the year, then week by week, I need to really prioritize the one thing, like, how do I get there? What do I need to do this week? What do I need to focus on this week? What do I need to give my attention to this week? And really start to map that out a little bit better. Multitasking is really a myth. We're not really capable of multitasking. We really need to dedicate our energy and our focus onto one thing at a time to really be completely successful um, and most productive in that area. So I think it's kind of along the same lines. Like sometimes I feel like my weeks are very not productive because I'm just like spread so thin and I'm trying to like tackle all these things all at the same time and you don't really know where to put your energy to so you just kind of spread it everywhere and then you don't really get anything accomplished as much as you would like to. So going along with this new ingraining of habits and new normals that I'm trying to do coupled with really trying to prioritize focusing on like one thing at a time or one task at a time to get to the overall bigger goals or the bigger accomplishments I think this is something new that I'm going to start doing is every Sunday really think about my week think about what I need to focus on what I need to prioritize map it out schedule it out and I'm going to see how that goes. And I'll report back um, to you guys as well about how it ends up working out. And I know I've, I've heard people say, I've heard people say, slash read this in books and from psychologists and, and things like that, that when you think about somebody who's who seems really dedicated or really focused and is kind of a highly successful accomplisher. I think this is what they do better than other people. It's not that they are just so high energy and so highly motivated and so highly dedicated that they, they can't be pulled off track. I think they just do a better job than other people about really setting standards for their life, creating the right habits, creating the right normals, and really structuring their life in a way that they can be most productive and successful. So think about that as you work through your own struggles and your own things and your own hectic lives, which I'm sure everyone listening to this can relate to. Remember that sometimes blocking out certain things and blocking off time for certain things and prioritizing one thing at a time even though at first it might feel like you aren't getting enough done it's actually probably going to result in more productivity for you and it's going to make you feel like you're accomplishing more I also just wanted to talk real quick um, also about the scattered brain or the stressed out brain um, because I have been feeling this a lot lately I just again kind of tying back into what I was just saying about schedules and things like that like I feel like my weeks are really scattered I feel like I'm working on trying to accomplish a lot it's all very stressful and none of it is very easy and I have a lot of frustration at work and then you know you come home and you carry that with you if your brain is bogged down with feeling frustrated or feeling stressed out or feeling anxious it still affects your your the way you respond to other things in your life so I wanted to talk about that just for a little bit um, because I try to really and this is why mindfulness and meditation is so important because it gives you the ability to for 10 minutes a day or however long your meditation is it gives you the ability to to try to turn your mind off 
from all the outside forces and really just be present in the moment. And with that becoming very present in the moment, you're actually able to reflect more freely and have kind of more of an honest perception of yourself as a human being. So it's one of the benefits of it. So I do try to be very mindful and with being very mindful, I think comes having a very healthy awareness of what your brain is doing, why your brain is reacting the way it is, why you're feeling the way that you feel. And then with that awareness, you can kind of, you can try to incorporate that into your reactions. So that's what I wanted to highlight here is remember that feelings are not the enemy. Feelings are not bad. Like we're meant to have feelings. Feelings come, they go, they change. They're like the weather, like the storm rolls in and then it rolls out kind of thing. Um, and we can't control that, but what we can control is how we react to our feelings and how we react to our emotions. And I think having a healthy awareness of our brain from that lens is really beneficial to us. If you're really, if you've really been stressed out at work and you come home and then your family does something to stress you out or maybe your refrigerator broke or your car has a flat tire, whatever, you know, name any other stressor in life, the compounding effect of that changes how you react to it. If I've had a super stressful day at work and I feel very frustrated and I come out and I have a flat tire on my car, I'm going to have a stronger reaction to that flat tire than I would have if I had been like peacefully like sipping my ties on the beach all day and then found my flat t my tire was flat. The brain has a set amount of energy and resources just like everything else in life just like any other muscle in your body I mean think about it like that if you do if you're weightlifting and you do 20 bicep curls with a 50 pound weight and then you try to pick up a five pound weight your muscle is fatigued the five pound weight is going to feel heavier than it would have if you had just been resting on the couch and then picked up the five pound weight. So your brain is the same way. If your brain has been, if you've really soaked up a lot of your brain's energy and resources and coping mechanisms and you've really stressed it out and it's, it's really been working hard all day, then you have less reserve. So if something else happens in your life, you're not going to react to it. It's not going to feel the same as it would otherwise. Think about that too as you go through your day. Don't and don't be afraid to admit it to yourself. Like I think that it's healthy to have an awareness of how our body works, how our minds work, how they're integrated. And when you do that, you can although you're not going to change the feelings, like you're not going to necessarily change the feelings and the emotions but what you can do is be mindful of how you're reacting to them and have an honest dialogue with yourself about like hey like why am I feeling the way I'm feeling about this why am I so emotional about this is it valid is it not valid do I how do I need to react to this it can promote a much more healthy way that you look at life and relationships and the way you respond to things and then on top of that make sure you're doing all the other things in life that you need to to keep your brain healthy things like mindfulness meditation things like self-care taking care of yourself giving your brain time off like again just like you would rest your muscle like you don't do 10 workouts back to back like you do a workout you take a break next day you do another workout same thing, like don't be afraid to give your brain some time off. If you've been really stressed out and you're going through some stuff, some hard stuff, it's okay to like give yourself some designated time for the brain to be able to just like check out, relax, 
you can chill. So self-care is, is super important. Mindfulness is super important. And then just being honest with yourself and aware of, of how your brain is working, why you're feeling what you're feeling, why you're feeling the emotions that you're feeling, and then having a healthier reaction to those things. Just am pulling up to the barn now, and I actually want to show off some um, fancy new tack that I got recently. But I think um, I'll put that on another video for another time because I've already talked everyone's ear off, and I'm sure you got things to do. But I'll put it on a separate video because I do want to show you guys what I got. All right, I'll talk soon. Bye.